Hi Beth, this is Marvis here in Klein with WLKY News. How's it going? Hi, thank you. Good. I was wondering, is there somebody that I can talk about? We got a video and it looks like one of the doctors from Baptist Health is involved in it. And I didn't know if you okay. all had been made aware or making any statements regarding John Rademacher. Yeah, that'd be great. Right away, just take a look at this CVS one, two, three, four windows, and even more down here. We just learned moments ago that there's actually no body camera footage of the shooting that happened between Floyd County deputies and one of the men here at this home that you can see Indiana State Police are still out here investigating. Hey guys, right now, just in the last few minutes, we're seeing protesters get arrested on 5th and Jefferson going to try to show you what's going on. We just saw police swarm in here. What the news company yeah, security know, for? Because several of our crews have been attacked I while they were why, down here. I wonder why, because y'all been down here motherfucking lying and reporting fake news. If you don't get out That's why y'all was attacked. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah check it, check it. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. And that's how I feel. I'm not scared of none of this other shit. Fuck is you talking about? Like I said, we got the right to protest. I don't care about none of these police. They not scaring me or nothing. We're going to continue to show you more, bring you safe coverage so you don't have to come out here. Even right now, we're hearing some police sirens. We're smelling some of that smoke, and you're hearing some of the cars just um, really speeding around this area. We've been seeing people driving the wrong way down the road as well out here. Some looters still as well. 30 this morning so for now but we're going to toss things back to the studio while we continue to survey the damage out here yeah marvis i was just going to ask you about the police presence and what you've encountered so far we could hear those sirens just a second ago have you seen a big police presence out there so far this morning what's the anticipated price tag because you mentioned 350 is that you said doubling the current amount yeah, it's about a 30 percent increase mm -hmm. what's the what's the overall dollars in the budget we can get you that number a tow truck driver for Louisville Metro Police was killed on the job today. And WLKY News was rolling as this woman jumped the curb, driving slowly into this group of protesters right in front of Metro Department of Corrections at 6th and Liberty. Despite a war of words, she too was redirected from her desired route. For people who say, we thought the protests were dying down. What do you say to them? It's not dying sure. down. There was a massive turnout this weekend as David Yaya McAtee, the popular West Louisville businessman, was laid to rest. Family and friends attended his celebration of life service Saturday at Canaan Christian Church. A lot of the phones, I would say almost all of the phones, are stolen out of the drawers over there, and we've seen many people driving around to take video this morning. Some people were there to try to send a peaceful message at last night's protest, specifically in honor of Breonna Taylor and some of the other victims, Amad. Arbery and George Floyd, but some others jumped on cars. They looted stores and threw objects at police. We talked to one man who said he was tired of living in fear. We are out here for a purpose. We are tired of dying. We are tired of being passive. And it's a fight at this point. Yes, it is a fight at this point. And if we got to fight with peace right now, so be it. But if there has to be violence, that's what needs to be. And I'm not saying that I'm radical. I'm not, but at the same time, they got to understand, just like we got to understand, that if we don't come together and fight, we're going to die on our backs, and I'm not going to die on my back. And we are also seeing a lot of graffiti. That's why we're choosing where we are very carefully. But again, the damage out here looking a lot like this. Roughly about 100 voters were beating on the door of the Kentucky Expo Center, demanding they be let in so they could cast their votes. This video right here, you can see they were stuck waiting in line when the polls closed around 6 o'clock, and we're told there was a backup of traffic at the fairgrounds keeping them from getting inside on time. I don't understand why this location was chosen with all of the construction work being done. It is 7 o'clock, and we have several big stories to get to this morning. But first, we're doing our part to stop the spread of the coronavirus here at WLKY News. You'll probably notice that we're also practicing social distancing, even here in the studio. Things may look a little different going forward, but we will continue to deliver the late-breaking news only WLKY can.
And that attorney for the grand juror held a news conference last week saying that his client wants to provide answers about what happened behind closed doors. That hearing with the judge is set for this morning. Several school districts all over our area and even the nation have closed due to concerns over the coronavirus. Today, uh, they always play the speech. I have a dream. Dr. King was more than a dreamer. The changes that have come let us know he was more than a dreamer. Some people were telling us that they use this business to actually get next door, which we'll show you in one second. Before we go over there, though, Dave, can you show them? We're seeing actually one bullet hole here, one bullet hole up here. Not sure where those came from. We're going to have to go towards the ground for a second just because of some of the um, crude a profanity out here and graffiti, but this is what some of the people said. They broke into that wig shop so that they could get into this jewelry store next door. This is the Tri-State Jewelers on 4th Street. Look at all of that damage. And Erica, that's exactly right. As the sun comes up, we're getting a better idea of the damage, but we're also starting to see more of these boards. This is that tear gas that was thrown out there. Obviously, we're using gloves this morning to show you some of this damage and show you some of what happened overnight. And I actually want to kind of cross the street if we can right here. Well, it's 625 now, and let's talk about Beyonce. Making more time for people you love. Is that why you came back to the Yes, I could. I missed you so much. I, I had to make it. time. <laughs> well, a Spencer County High School student hacked an online system, changed grades, and now about a dozen kids are in trouble. The principal says the students wrote a short piece of computer code. Still right now, if you look behind me right here, there's some protesters that are even sitting here in the middle of the road on Jefferson. And if we turn around even this way, you can see they've taken some cars over here and blocked off this entire intersection. Some cars are coming over here right now. Even if we go even back over here, you can see these cars are being forced to turn around. Davis, our photojournalist, is showing you just the litter of glass all over this sidewalk. This is what we're seeing all over downtown. There was even this trash can over here that was still, you can see it's still smoldering this morning. It was set on fire. This is hours after that protest. It's just been absolutely devastating to see what things look like. We've been talking to some of the people out here and even still seeing looters here on 4th Street, which is unfortunate to see that some of these businesses, again, like we mentioned a little while ago, have just bounced back from the coronavirus pandemic and were just allowed to reopen open, maybe under a limited capacity, and now they have these broken windows. Even despite this gate being here, it looks like they were still able to break through, get inside, and destroy quite a bit inside of there. You can see our first day of school photo is picture perfect. And on Tuesday morning, Bye. she made her debut into second grade at Kenwood Elementary through the lens of a web camera. She's one of the 98,000 JCPS students starting the school year with non-traditional instruction. That's due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It's like not good or bad, just different. There are going to be days and times that it works. There are going to be days and times that it doesn't. 2.0 ran days slow days while, days while we sat in front of this class. And Marvis, I got to tell you, you mentioned this is your first derby, but you are doing a great job out there. You are really, uh, you have become a Churchill Downs expert this morning. Well, are you ready for some mayhem monster jam? I don't know if I did that right. It is back at the Freedom Hall this weekend. The truck flipping, smashing, and racing event promises even more excitement than ever before. Prosecutors are looking to dismiss the charges against Kenneth Walker. He was charged with attempted murder of a police officer after officials say he fired a shot that hit a police officer as they forced their way inside Breonna Taylor's apartment to serve a search warrant. LMPD returned fire and Taylor was killed. Walker told police he thought someone was breaking in. Good morning to the both of you. We want to show you what that means. It means that a lot of these streets downtown are blocked off, maybe by big trucks. But if we step over this way, you can see that this area is even blocked by cement blocks. You're not getting through these barricades that they've put up. Again, we have identified the man as John Rademacher, a local anesthesiologist. But when we talked to LMPD, they told us no arrests have been made. No charges have been filed at this time. Marvis Herring, WLKY News. Moments ago, we just spoke to Indiana State Police and got an update. I'm going to show you the scene while I share the new information we just learned. UK's president announced a controversial mural in Memorial Hall will be removed. The mural in question features enslaved African Americans as one of its elements. You can see it here on your screen. Take a look at this picture. It reenacts the 2019 chokehold that police applied to Elijah McClain, who later died. 
The photo was taken in front of a public memorial at the spot where McLean actually died. And the photo was sent through text to Officer Jason Rosenblatt, one of the officers who stopped McLean. According to Aurora PD, Rosenblatt replied, quote, ha ha. A lot of you might be very familiar with the Jim Crow South where white supremacists thought that it was amusing to take pictures of themselves next to the to bodies of lynched human beings, of brutal lynchings, and that is exactly what we have seen now today. Interim Chief Vanessa Wilson said Friday she fired three officers, that includes Rosenblatt for the incident, and a fourth officer resigned before his termination hearing. There was no graduation ceremony inside Jefferson County High School. It is closed due to the novel coronavirus, but there's no denying that students' hearts are full when you see reactions like this one. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Excitement dazzled off the diploma. Yeah, baby! But to understand why this moment is so special, you should know this 22-year-old story. Are you a proud mother today? I am so beyond proud, I can't even tell you. Before starting his transgender journey, the birth of Zachary Schneider's children derailed high school graduation plans. We've got a special derby edition for you. Our Marvis Herring is live at Churchill Downs with us. Yes, Lauren, that's right. We're outside of Churchill Downs right now, getting ready for Kentucky Derby 146. A lot to talk about on today's newscast. Several protests are planned for today in Metro Louisville. We know at least one of them starts as early as 8 o'clock this morning. Coming up, we're going to tell you how Louisville Metro Police are planning for those protests and how protest organizers are responding. Plus, Derby Day is down to its smallest field in the last 17 years. We'll take a look at the horses still in the race, including one with a connection to Louisville. We have a lot coming up, like I mentioned. But first, let's talk about this fall weather. Let's bring in meteorologist Suzanne Horgan for a look at your Derby Day forecast. Hey, Suzanne. <laughs> What a celebration, an incredible moment for a COVID-19 patient who spent, get this, 43 days in the hospital. Wednesday, Ruth Moore was discharged from Baptist Health. She was greeted by family members as she left the hospital with plenty of hugs and tears to go around. We want it to be a hope to other families. Also where the sister of Brianna Taylor graduated in recent years. School administrators say with all of the civil unrest here locally and nationally, they wanted to show the community that everyone can work together. Tuesday's cleanup crew at Central High School included teachers, students and volunteers. And even during the morning hours, working in the heat can be draining. But it's a step away from the nonstop news cycle that includes coverage of protests, elections, the coronavirus, and the pandemic's impact on just about everything, including schools. There's a lot of negative stuff going on. And, and honestly, as a black man, I'm kind of, it's emotional. It's emotionally draining. That's why assistant principal Shay Founder rallied a troop of teachers to unite this week during summer vacation. But decades in the dark make a reunion like this sparkle even brighter. <laughs> Sealed with a kiss, Jerry Barnett returned to his mother's arms in Radcliffe. Tears, smiles, phones capturing every second. This is so awesome. Yes, Thank it you, is. Jesus. <laughs> this is finally, finally. Yes. Yes. This family's relief is visible. You see, Jerry never left home. He was taken before he was even old enough to start kindergarten. She said they took him. He's, they got him and gone. Officers Patrick Norton and Alex Dugan fired shots at Gazaway after LMPD claims Gazaway fired shots towards officers. But the agency says Norton also fired shots in East Louisville last Tuesday, striking an armed suspect who survived. It angers me because we see the difference on how things are handled. Gazaway's family members, supporters of Black Lives Matter, even some people who were inside Kroger in November, came to the Portland Kroger Sunday to protest. They point out that Norton used de-escalation tactics and non-lethal force for the East Louisville suspect who had a gun, but they say that wasn't the case for Gazaway. He's just not a good man. And when it comes to a man who has that authority, you got to be careful with it. And he's not careful. He's cursing. 
The family's attorney says LMPD declined their request to see surveillance footage from inside Kroger. They say police told them that's because the investigation is ongoing. So they're wondering how Norton was already back on the job. I, I was just crazy. I was just as ready. I thank God. Hey, look here. My age, never thought it would happen. <laughs> Been through all kinds of mistreatment and abuse just because I was black. I think I was out there preaching and crying and all. We were all rejoicing that this is the day.